everyone, welcome back to The Scale Nerd. My name is Tom Pierce, and this is my fifth and final video in the Overwatch series of videos that I've been working on, uh, featuring the build of a Polaris Quadrobike kit and Navy SEAL Sniper Team kits from a company called UFAN Models. These are 135th scale kits that have really nice detail, uh, not any instructions in the kit for the bike, which made it a little bit tricky and hopefully it makes my videos that much more helpful to you if you decide to do the same project. But I did my first video was the building of the bike. Second video was the painting of the bike. Third video was weathering and distressing of the bike. And the fourth video, we looked at building and painting the two figures. So now we're at the fifth video in the series, the diorama. So uh, approaching this project, I was probably inspired most by a by the movie Lone Survivor and the scene that they had there up in the mountains of Afghanistan, uh, the Rocky Mountainous terrain with a lot of green foliage. Uh, that was probably my greatest inspiration. I did additional research, uh, checking out photographs of, of the military in similar situations so I could really get an idea of what the potentially this terrain could look like. I wanted to do a scene where this team was scouting out areas to set up overwatch to protect their brothers in the field. And well, this is what I came up with. So hopefully you'll enjoy this next video. Let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you my building of the diorama for overwatch. Okay, so we start the base with this wooden architectural molding piece I got from the local Lowe's store. Cut some blue foam into two squares about the same shape and size. A uh, little white Elmer's glue to glue two pieces together. Give them a nice little twist and slide to get the glue spread around really well. Once I got those glued together well and dried, I run them over a belt sander to try to get the four sides nice and smooth and flush. Then I go back and take some black lacquer, gloss lacquer, and spray the wooden base and set that aside. So this is where the fun begins. Go ahead and start taking the X-Acto knife or knife of your choice and start carving away at the blue foam block to get a relative uh, shape of the hillside that we're gonna be doing in this scene. So now I'm gonna take some stones that I found along the road and using some uh, Gorilla Glue, poly glue, we'll go ahead and start gluing these stones into shape. So you just kind of play with them, turn them and twist them different ways until you get what aesthetically looks like what you're going for to build the cliff side for this Afghan hill. So again, just using some of this polyurethane Gorilla Glue, we've got it kind of a good start on the rocky hillside cliff. So now I'm going to use some vinyl spackling compound here to go ahead and start surfacing uh, the ground texture on the blue block here. Uh, just kind of start spreading it around, getting in with a little spatula and filling in some of the areas that I didn't really get a good rock fill for on the sides. I like to go ahead and surface the sides of the block with the spackling compound as well so that I can sand it down and get it as smooth as I possibly can. Moving down to some smaller stones and ultimately pebbles. Uh, start again filling out this base. Manipulate them around while the spackling compound is still pliable. And once that dries, uh, I've gone on ahead and taking the sanding block and start working on sanding the size to get a nice smooth surface. Good clean edges. Now using this Micromark scenery glue, it's kind of like a white Elmer's glue, but it's watered down quite a bit so we can just kind of brush it into place across the surface of the ground uh, area and then pour some smaller grain sand in there and then go back over it with a thin glue to use capillary action 
uh, letting it saturate throughout the entire surface area and lock this sand down. Go ahead and use the same glue to coat over top of the, uh, the spackling on the side so it kind of seals it and makes it uh, a little bit smoother and glossier and does not quite so porous. So with some enamel primer, going on ahead and spraying it up now so we can get the whole base uh, primered up so that uh, it, it all receives paint at the same in the same way otherwise you got some areas are hard and some areas are porous and it's kind of difficult to paint them evenly so by hitting the primer on there this gives it all the same surface tent uh, surface texture or basically um, just makes it the paint go down smoother using German brown black I go ahead and paint the entire thing to give a good dark background then take some brown and uh, go over just the dirt areas with the brown now I'm mixing some uh, brown and white and black together to try to come up with uh, a new tone that I can use to start painting the actual rocks themselves. Once I've got the base color, uh, a dark base color down on the stones and the rocks, go ahead and lighten it up a little bit with some sand color and do some first layer of dry brushing to start bringing uh, the dim three dimensional texture out, um, leaving the really deep crevices uh, relatively dark to create the shadows. And I just repeat this process and keep lightening the stone color a little bit by little bit as I dry brush over the texture of the natural texture of the rocks to try to really bring them to life and get a good deep three-dimensional uh, sunlit appearance. After using a little bit lighter shade of brown to start dry brushing the dirt area, I go ahead and use a little bit of green to also just kind of lightly, randomly dry brush over the dirt area to simulate a little bit of scruff on the ground of vegetation. Now using uh, these little weed tops that I found in the field across the road here, uh, I just cut off a little piece, uh, spray some adhesive glue on it, and then run it through a bag of green foam. Gives us some foliage. Take some hairspray to kind of seal it down in there and really lock that foam in. Pull out the airbrush and start airbrushing that using a little bit of brown at the base where the, there's less foliage and you're seeing the tree uh, trunk and, and uh, branches. And then going on up the branches and the foliage to give a little bit darker green and then I'll start layering in other colors to give it a little bit more of a, again, sunlit three-dimensional uh, appearance.
So here are several products that I'm using from uh, many grounds and other vendors with, to uh, give me some good foliage to put down on the ground. This stuff is awesome. It's got little randomly shaped and sized tufts of uh, foliage that you can buy, different colors, different types of foliage, but it's all got uh, a little kind of adhesive backing to it, and, the, and that heat adhesive backing is amazing. It's kind of a, almost like a pliable rubber glue, and it's virtually invisible and low matte, or it's a, it's a matte finish, so you can't, you just don't see that glue base when you stick it down in there, and it's very pliable, allows you to work it into the surface, so... And again, they're all very randomly shaped and sized, so you can find one that fits well, and you can even kind of break them apart into smaller ones if you want to. Absolutely love these. These are fantastic product. Um, so again, using different uh, styles of foliage and colors, I kind of move them around there to give it uh, a less uniform look, a little bit more random and natural, uh, just kind of pushing it down into the surface with the adhesive that's already on the back of it now the color is a little bit unnatural at this point but that's okay uh, because we're going to adjust that later so then i take just green foam drop some white glue in there and then take little tiny pieces of green foam and drop them in with the white glue to create some an additional level of ground cover And a little bit of touch up on the rocks, give it some final highlighting. mix a wash of a darker green color and go through all this foliage and try to start giving uh, giving it a little bit less contrast some of it's just too bright and vibrant and some of it is is far too dead so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of darken and mute some of the colors and as I get that done I'll go through with some other mixtures of green and continue to wash until I get a blend of what I think looks a little bit more natural across the ground cover. At this point, I'm using Vallejo pigments, uh, dry pigments to start working further on the actual ground itself to make it look uh, more believable, realistic, natural. So using these four colors, the brown, the uh, yellow sand, the off-white beige color, and a black, I kind of mix up a little bit somewhat of a neutral uh, brown tone and go ahead and start laying that relatively heavily with a dry brush onto the surface area and then kind of randomly intermixing the other three colors around so it's just not one solid color or even color of brown and get more of a natural uh, randomness to it uh, blotchy uh, thinking about where the vehicle is going to be sitting and the tires have ran 
uh, is going to come into play here as well. Stuff's great. You can just kind of sprinkle it in and move it around until you get what you like. Uh, actually kind of mixing your color on the fly uh, right there on the ground uh, really has a nice effect. Uh, now, this is not going to stay here. It's going to all blow away if I don't seal it in. So we've got to get it sealed down. Normally, I don't use this material but with this foam base underneath the here I'm a little bit worried about putting anything that would melt the foam so I go ahead and start my capillary action here by locking it down with this uh, water uh, or thin ballast cement and that's going to really kind of turn this into paint liquid paint and it'll harden up and and when it'll dry it'll get nice and hard and stick to the surface area Problem with it is it's just got a little bit of a satin finish to it and uh, a little bit gets a little bit quite a bit darker once it dries. So I go ahead and let that dry. That's okay. It gives me a good base. It seals the foam in really well uh, between all the layers of material I've got underneath of this. This foam's pretty protected now. So now I go back with the dry pigment and give it an additional layer. Uh, of color, adjusting the color and getting it kind of back to that really powdery dry matte look. And I'm going to try not to lose too much of that look and get it quite so dark in this next pass. And the way I'll do that is instead of using the clear glue or the white glue, we use enamel thinner. So with the enamel thinner, uh, it tends to dry without darkening the pigments quite as much. Uh, it looks really dark when it's wet like this, but once it dries, it lightens up quite a bit, and it's almost as light as it is when you first put it down, but not quite. As well as uh, maintaining its lightness and darkness uh, to what you want, it's gonna dry with a much more uh, powdery matte finish to it. It won't go to that kind of not gloss but uh, satin effect so you can see here what it looks like with the enamel thinner versus just the glue on the left so this shows a side by side on the left you're going to see what you get with just the glue and on the right with the enamel thinner treatment once that's done i want to just kind of really seal this all down without altering its look so i like to use just a light pass of acrylic matte varnish and it just kind of seals everything in without changing color or um, finish. And so with that, the ground is pretty much done. So after gluing the, gluing the ground down to the wooden base with some epoxy, I need to get this uh, sniper crew glued down to the surface. So I want to know where to drill these holes. Basically, I'm a little concerned about the model breaking off and not gluing down very well to the surface. So what I do is put a couple red paint dots on the tires and then set it in position then pull it back off and it leaves little red dots on the ground. That allows me then drill a couple little holes or tap a couple little holes into the ground to drive some finish nails in. I just take a, a finish nail and cut it into two pieces and then uh, glue them down into the surf, into the base, then drill a couple holes in the tires and glue the other half of the nails into the tires. Then it acts like a little peg system to secure, help secure the model to the base when I put it down with the epoxy glue. It's gonna be much more stable and less likely to snap off of there if it gets bumped. And then finally, I go on with some final touches of the dry pigments just to give just a little bit more of a dry, uh, 
powdery look to the ground, sandy look to the ground. Add my nameplate. And we're done. So let's take a look at this thing. Okay, everyone, there you go. The Overwatch project is complete, done, and in the books. I hope you've enjoyed this video series. I certainly enjoyed working on the project and putting the videos together, together to share with you. Uh, maybe there were some tips and tricks in there that you learned something from, as I certainly learned as I worked on the project. I think it's really important as scale modelers that we continue to share our uh, techniques and kits and materials and processes with one another so that we can help the the hobby of scale modeling grow. I, I love this uh, art form of visual storytelling through scale modeling and certainly enjoy it. I don't like to make it, take it too seriously and make it a competition, but I sure love trying to get better and enjoying the art form and seeing what you guys are working on out there as well. So please come visit me on my Scale Nerd Facebook page where I share a lot of other projects, uh, photographs, videos, and tips and tricks on there as I work on new projects. And then also subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Scale Nerd on YouTube, where again, you'll see videos of my projects, uh, how-tos and things that I've been working on as well as completed projects. So again, have fun with your scale modeling, enjoy it, be safe, and until the next time, take care, safe and happy modeling. Bye now.